Okay, so we finished uh, tabs one through six, and we're now going to move into step uh, to tab nine here. Uh, I did have to stop this video and come back to it. Um, however, if you were still following along, you would still have all your information loaded down here that you could just go right into. However, if you do have to stop and your files are saved off uh, from running tabs one through six, you can always restart again by simply coming to tab one and going to other processed. Go back in and pick your files which are going to be these in order to take them into tab 9. Click open and here we are. So tab 9. First thing we do is go into combine RGB and we're going to add our files back in. So we're going to do RGB so that's red. We're going to add green and finally blue. There we go. Over here on your side, you're going to see uh, your red, your green, your blue. If you're doing narrow band, you'll actually see HA03, excuse me, and S2. And if you're doing narrow band, you'll actually have to assign the color uh, to whichever uh, stack that you have. However, when loading RGB, it will automatically default. So red goes to red, green will go to green, and blue will go to blue. The top slider of each section is a multiplier. The multiplier is basically how much color you're applying, or the strength of the color, I believe it is, to the image. Your BG is your background. I wouldn't worry about this slider. That's for a little bit more advanced usage. And then your L at the bottom is luminance. You can increase the luminance of that particular channel, up or down, depending on what you want to do. And once you have, you've started off with assigning your colors, go ahead and hit calculate. And there's our image. So at this point, if you want to know what the sliders will or can't do, what I always suggest is go ahead and take it to an extreme. Pop it up, hit calculate, see what happens. And that's what you get. So obviously we don't want that. If you take it down to the other extreme, hit calculate. You'll see what it does there. So for us, we're going to want to put it right back about one. So we're doing equal weights, one to one to one. And there's our image. Now if you want to mix colors, I'll be doing a video later on about that, which is a little bit more advanced than what we're doing here. But right now this looks good, so we're going to hit create. And combine RGB of the image. So this is our first process on tab 9, so we're going to hit OK. And once that's been done, we're going to hit cancel. Now if you come down here to the bottom, you'll see there's our first process from tab 9. You want to always click on the last image you were working which is going to become the first image on the bottom from the bottom up. So here we are at this point. We're going to go right into batch modify. And again, it's going to ask you if you want to use the image you're currently on, which is the very last image I've been working. So I'm going to hit yes. And we're going to get rid of the stacking artifacts that are here on the corners. In order to do this, just pick a corner or if you want to do a small area, you can. You want to do a large area you can uh, whatever you want to do but just left click hold pick your corner left click hold and drag and when you're happy with your crop just release your left button there and hit crop OK hit OK again and once again if you notice we're still looking at the cropped image just because we're not looking at the most recent image we've been working so we're going to come down to process number two because we've completed two processes first one was combine rgb second one was to batch modify so here we are now what's next if start over here on the right hand side here's your histogram for your picture our save button which we're going to be able to use later on when we go to save off our final files either in fits tiff or jpeg this is your black point slider, your white point slider. This is our saturation button, which we're going to go ahead and tick now. Under here are pre-entered stretches that you can choose from. You can either use no stretch, which will put it to <laughs> as, as dark as it can be, or you can go all the way to the highest extreme, which is going to really blow it out. But it'll also help you see colors a little bit better when you're doing adjustments into HSL selected color. So we're going to put this back down to 20%, 5 sigma 2.5 baits, which makes it kind of easy for me. 
Further down the list, we have our highlight slider, our saturation, the threshold for the saturation, sharpness, and your protection. Uh, I would suggest at this point, go ahead and change these values on these boxes over here, one and three. If you were to make an adjustment on this, even though it doesn't seem like you would go very far, it would make a dramatic adjustment here on this side. In order to change these values, just go ahead and double click out here on the side. We'll bring it up to three and four, which means it'll be very small increments, which will equal small changes. So let's go ahead and change those up to three and four, three and four, scroll down, three and four. All right. Let's go ahead and take some light pollution out. So we're going to go into remove light pollution again and make sure I'm on the, the actual copy I want to work on, which is process number two. So we're going to make this into process number three. It asks you to make five boxes around here. Uh, you can do huge boxes if you want. I found though that doing smaller boxes, starting off around my corners and my edges, can do that like so. I'm going to stay out of my nebula. I'm going to stay off of galaxies. I just basically want to stay in the light polluted areas. So we're going to take some of the light pollution out or hit calculate. Here we go. There's a good change. If they're red boxes, uh, basically those uh, have been thrown away uh, because there's something in the in the in the particular box that perhaps APP didn't like. In order to correct that, just hit remove red. Those boxes will go away. Yellow, uh, same thing. It's saying okay, I'm going to use it, but there's something about the value it didn't particularly like. You can run this again if you'd like to. Just go ahead and create more boxes. There we go, and hit calculate again. There is a point where you're going to get to diminished returns. No matter how much you continue to change it, it uh, may not get any better. At this point, the majority of the light pollution has been removed. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and save. It's going to save it off to a FITS file again. Once again, combine RGB, which was our process one. Our modify, MOD, which was the batch modifying where we trimmed it up, which became process number two. And then we did light remove the light pollution, which is LPC, and then automatically, when you're doing the light pollution, it will also apply a CBG, which is to calibrate your background. So we're gonna hit OK, save it off to a FITS. It's gonna roll to the bottom. Let's make sure we're on the correct image. Now, what I do, <clears throat> excuse me, even though uh, a calibrate background was already performed on the remove light pollution, I go ahead and do it again reason being is because you're going to have to have it calibrated if you decide to go and do star calibration. So uh, also too I've seen results change uh, as a result of doing a separated uh, background calibration away from the light pollution. So we want to pick areas where there's not a lot of stars so we're going to make small boxes. We're going to go around just make a few. You don't have to do a lot just a couple, but you definitely want to stay in the dark areas, avoid being on stars, avoid being inside your nebula or on your galaxies. Just pull them off to the side. Just nice dark areas you want to stay in because you're using these as your reference for your background. You can come up to your nebula and your dust lanes, but it's good to stay out of them. So there's a few, we're going to hit calculate. And that looks a little bit better. I'm going to make a few more, like so, and hit calculate again. Okay, with that I'm going to hit OK and save. Once again, combine RGB, which was process one, modify, which was process two. The light pollution in the initial background calibration was three, and now we're making another background calibration which is four we hit OK hit OK again and there is our fourth process picture